Howdy. My name is Nonat, and today I'm here to give you a basic tutorial on using the Only Sheet 2nd Pro Edition. For those of you who aren't aware, the Only Sheet, or TOS, is a powerful character creation engine made using Microsoft Excel. Through its fluid design and interface, it can allow you to make characters quickly, easily, and painlessly. Along with the second Pro Edition, there are TOSs for a multitude of different systems, from 3.5 to 5th Edition to even 1st Edition Pathfinder. But for the sake of today's video, we're going to be focusing on TOS 2nd Pro Edition for Pathfinder 2e. Honestly, so much of this sheet is automated, it's kind of crazy. It also comes with built-in content from five different 2e sourcebooks. TOS 2nd Pro contains content from the Core Rulebook, Lost Omens Character Guide, Lost Omens Gods and Magic, Lost Omens World Guide, and the Advanced Player's Guide, all within the program. Now I'll warn you, it's going to look a bit overwhelming at first, but I promise that after this video, it'll make a lot more sense. We're going to go page by page, explaining the purpose of each one. So starting off, you're going to open the program, and you'll see this welcome sheet. Here's where you'll put in your personal key, which you get after registering for the program. Once you put it in, it'll completely unlock the program, and you'll have full access. Another thing to make sure you do is enable macros within Excel. You need to go into your File, Options, Trust Center, and then Trust Center Settings, and from here you can find your macros and enable all macros. Without doing this, a lot of TOS won't work properly. That's all you need to worry about with the Welcome page. Now we can really focus on the important parts, starting with the Control tab. This will allow you to enable and disable a variety of different pages and tabs, and that allows you to do as much or as little as you want with the program. For example, I'm not going to be going over the XP or Coins pages in this video since this is a strictly beginner's guide, so I can just click these and they will no longer appear at the bottom here. We're just going to be going over the front page, back page, customize, and dashboard. You can see there's a lot here for animal companions, spell books, formulas, everything like that, but we're just going to keep it simple today. Alongside this, there are options to load, save, and completely reset the character. Now let's jump into the real meat of the program. This is the front page, and you can see it looks a lot like most Pathfinder 2e character sheets, just a little bit reorganized. The first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is these yellow boxes. Anything in yellow is required and must be filled in. There are two other colors of boxes that are worth noting, white and gray. Any white box, such as the one seen under gender, skin, player name, these are all manually filled in. You will just put in whatever you want and fill them in yourself. Gray boxes, on the other hand, will always be automatically filled and will not need to be edited by the user. These boxes take information from all over your character sheet to automatically fill themselves in correctly. To start off making our character, we don't even need to really type much in. If we look over here on the right, we have Quick Picks. If you just click any of these buttons, an organized list appears. So if we want to pick the Catfolk Ancestry, we click the Ancestry button, drop down the APG Ancestries, select Catfolk, and hit Select. We can see some things automatically fill in around the character sheet. The same way we just did that, we can also pick our class. For today's example, we're going to go ahead and make a Barbarian. So we will select Barbarian, and already a ton of stuff has appeared. Going down this list, you can select your deity, your weapons and armor, and even your starting gear. But if you really just want to get your character up and going quick, you can click the Class Kit icon. Depending on your class, it may give you a couple of choices. Simply pick from the choices offered to you. Since we're a Barbarian, we can choose a Great Axe, Great Club, Great Sword, or a Battle Axe and Shield. We'll click the Great Sword for today's example, hit OK, and bam, it's all filled in. All of our new items are seen down here in the gear section from the Adventure Pack, and we can even see that some of them are located in the Backpack. This is something incredibly useful about the One Sheet in that you can use it to easily track where your items are, which is important because Pathfinder 2e has some fairly strict rules about the number of actions it takes to use an item depending on its location. If we open up the Quick Pick for Gear, we can quickly find a Bandolier. Simply open up Adventuring Gear, find the Bandolier, and hit Select. Now that we have one on our character, obviously make sure you keep track of your money spent this way, we can enter Band into the Location tab. Now, if we really want anything at a moment's notice, we can put it in our bandolier. Let's say we want our chalk 
at a moment's notice. We just want to be able to grab it and use it rather than taking it out of our backpack. Well, we can simply change the location of our chalk from backpack to band. And now we know exactly where our chalk is. Scrolling up a little bit, we can actually see that our armor and weapons have been automatically filled out by the sheet. Because of the class kit we picked, and it gave us the greatsword and javelin, we can already see our attack bonus, our damage, traits, types of damage, all automatically filled in. Now obviously these aren't completely correct yet, as there are many things we have not done for our character yet. If you'd rather pick your own equipment rather than use the class kit, you can use the weapon, armor, and shield options and pick your own just like we picked the bandolier from the gear quick picks. If we go through here and pick the hatchet and hit select, it adds it right to our weapons list and fills everything out automatically. Now just put in your character level, your alignment, and even a character name, we'll call him Meow Mix, and we're pretty much done here on the front page for now. But I do want to point out that this is only one half of the front page. I'm not going to be going too deep into it in this video, but if we scroll over to the right, the off print section, we get a much deeper and slightly more complicated sheet than the left side. This is not super important and not something you're going to need to look at at a moment's notice, but it is incredibly useful. This sheet tells you exactly why everything on your character sheet is the way it is. Why do we have 20 hit points? Well, because we get 8 from our Ancestry and 12 from our class. Why is our Dex, Charisma, and Wisdom the way they are? Well, because we're a Catfolk, and we can see we got a Dex boost from Ancestry, a Charisma boost from Ancestry, and a Wisdom flaw from Ancestry. This keeps track of everything about your character in great detail. It even has some very deep detail on the weapons you have equipped. Their category, type, family, group, cost, damage die, base damage, it's... Crazy, but like I said, this is not necessary. All you need for your character is right over here. The right side is just if you need to know how you got a certain bonus. The back tab is incredibly simple and very useful. First off, I highly recommend hitting the up arrow four times to increase the font size. Now, you'll notice that there isn't a whole lot of information for us here on this page yet. There's nothing for our background, nothing for our ancestry, we're missing a class feat. And you'll notice a lot of these messages are flanked by two black arrows. If you ever see a message on the back part of your character sheet, it means there is either an error or a warning for your character. We can see we have seven options awaiting our input on the customized worksheet, so let's go ahead and check out the customized worksheet. If we click customize down here, it looks like a lot. But it's really not. We are only concerned with the things in yellow. From this list, we need to fill out Ancestry feats, our Ability Boosts, our Barbarian Instinct, Racial Heritage, Background, Trained Skills, our Ability Boosts from First Level, and our Class Feats. Easy enough. Just click on whichever one you want to start with, and it takes you right to it. Because there are so many feats in Pathfinder 2e, we really need to use the Quick Pick system here. And luckily, it's pretty intuitive. We're looking for an Ancestry feat. We know we're a Catfolk, so we drop down here. We pick whichever Catfolk Ancestry feat we want, hit Select, and it already gets put right on there for us. I won't bore you by filling all of these out in front of you, as that would take a little bit of time. Just know that all I'm doing is going to each yellow box and either using a drop-down menu, like this, or using a Quick Pick pick menu like this. Now that we've filled out all of the yellow links on the customized sheet, let's jump back over to the back sheet and see that it now holds a ton of new info for us here. Here we can see any and all of our class and character features explained in detail. Now what's worth noting is that since Paizo's created symbols are unavailable through Excel, the program uses a very similar legend of icons. We can see at the top that a filled diamond represents one action, an empty diamond represents a free action, and a small cluster of four diamonds represents a reaction. Scrolling down and looking at our class feat Sudden Charge, we can see that it has two filled diamonds, so we know it's a two action activity, and then it tells us exactly what it does. And we can also see that there are no errors or warnings detected, so our character is all set to go. Looking back at our front page, we can see we have our 18 in Strength, 14 in Dex and Con, and a 14 in Const uh, Charisma, as well as a minus 1 to Intelligence. Along with that, all of our skills have been filled out. We know our Armor class, we know our Flat-Footed Armor class, and all of our damage and attack rolls are completely calibrated here right on our page, and I didn't put in any of this. 
The final page I'm going to be touching on in this basic tutorial is the dashboard. You can think of this as your simplified character sheet. It contains everything you'll need in 90% of situations. Your HP, your AC, stats, skills, saving throws, and attacks. You can track damage to your character and healing with one click of a button. It'll pop up this little window. Let's say we took 8 damage. Validate. Now we know we have 14 hit points left and we've taken 8 damage. Oh, and let's say we hit the healing button because we got healed for 6 points. Validate. We restore 6 hit points. You can also use this trackers section down here to keep track of certain things. Now this requires a little more manual input, but it's still not too complicated. If we move back over to the Customize page, down here under Custom, we see Tracker Setup. If we click that, it'll take us to a big empty table here labeled Dashboard Trackers. Let's say we want to keep track of our javelins. Well, we would put in Javelin. So since we have three javelins, we simply input that, and we can see on our dashboard we are now tracking javelins. If we make a thrown attack with our javelin, all we have to do is double-click it, and it spends one. We now have two javelins. One javelin... Now we're out of javelins. Simple as that. The tracker can be used for items, consumables, even spell slots if you set them up correctly. I might go into it more in detail in a future video, but it's very useful. The last aspect of the dashboard I'll be covering in this video is the active effects table. This is honestly my personal favorite aspect of TOS. By clicking this button right here, looks like three yellow squares, it will bring up a quick pick menu that lists every spell, ability, condition, etc. By selecting it from this list, it will be added to the table, give you the information on the effect, and keep track of how much time is left on all active effects. For example, let's drop down conditions and say our barbarian is raging. We'll scroll down, we'll find raging, and hit select. So perfect, it's already added to the table. On top of that, let's say he's also being affected by the condition Enfeebled 1. We select that, we add Enfeebled 1 to the modifier, and we can see you are Enfeebled 1. Gain a minus 1 status penalty to strength-based rolls and DCs. In our weapons loadout, we can see that TOS is taking our Rage and Enfeebled conditions into account when determining our attack rolls and our damage rolls. While we'd normally only be dealing 1d12 plus 4, thanks to our plus 4 strength modifier, we're gaining 2 melee damage from our raging, and then losing 1 from our enfeebled, leading to a total of plus 5. On top of that, we can also add a duration. Let's say our rage is lasting for 1 minute, and enfeebled lasts for 3 rounds. When we input it like this, we can start hitting the 1 round, 1 minute, 1 hour, 1 day buttons, and if we click 1 round, we see there's nine rounds of raging left and two rounds of enfeebled. And the second that duration hits zero, you can see that enfeebled has worn off. We're still raging, so if we look back up at our weapons, our attack rolls and damage rolls have gone up because our enfeebled is no longer active. It's incredibly useful and can be used to track any effect in the game. And that's it for the very basics of TOS 2nd Pro Edition. I want to thank TOS for sponsoring this video, as well as providing the product for me to explain. The creator of this sheet is constantly improving and adding hot fixes and more content all the time. Even in the last few days, they've updated the sheet multiple times within hours of bugs being reported. There's also an active community on the TOS forums right on the website. It's a great place to share your experiences with TOS, as well as upload and download custom creations within the program. Tons of users are uploading their own homebrewed content on the forum that can be downloaded and used right in TOS. I hope this tutorial helped you understand TOS Second Pro Edition a little bit better. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and until next time, no nat ones.